This is completely wrong. What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Road to PhD. My name is Kimberly and I'm so excited to have you here today. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe so that other people just like you can find this video. And while you're there, might as well give it a like. This channel aims to inspire and encourage black women in STEM from high school to college and all the way through grad school. There are some common mistakes that high school seniors make when applying to college and I'm here to give you 10 of some common mistakes that people make and how you can avoid those mistakes. If you're interested in any of this, please stick around for all 10. Thank you so much. If you find any of it helpful, please subscribe. The first mistake is not knowing enough about the school, making very, very, very vague references in your essays when it comes to like not doing your research. For example, everybody knows about Harvard, but what does Harvard have to specifically offer you and like why is it important to your major and your development so when i was applying to upenn i did my research bro i was talking about the penn vegan society um the places that most penn students volunteered um around the philadelphia area what the people on campus were doing about food and social justice and school lunches and all of that and it was very thoroughly wefted into my essay and I really think you should really take some time to do some research and don't just vaguely say I want to go here because it's an Ivy League and they have like the best business program and that's why Wharton is the best no don't do that okay the second most common mistake that a lot of high school seniors make is that they start their applications too late I know that the common application was recently opened on August 1st and it usually opens at the same time every year august 1st but some people wait too long to start drafting their essays now you won't know all of the supplements um the questions and everything but what you can start doing is drafting a personal statement remember that it takes time and multiple drafts to get to the version that you are proud of and want to send off and also, you might want to have someone review that draft and it won't be possible for them to give you th um, a thorough review if you send it to them um, a day before the deadline. Like, that's a huge no-no. So make sure you start as early as you can. If you know any of the past supplementaries or secondaries, regardless of what school, I mean, it depends on what school you're applying to, but what you can always start early is your personal statement and what you can do is also create a list of people who you trust who know you well both professional family school and um, a list so that they you can know who's gonna review that essay and you can give them a, like a good turnaround time most people take anywhere between three and a, three days in a week and so you want to make sure you you value that as well and so just don't don't wait until the last minute to do any of these things if you haven't started and it's already September you are already behind the third common mistake that a lot of high school seniors make is that they don't have a good balance of dream schools, target and reach schools, and safety schools. Some people only apply to safety schools and some people apply to way too many dream schools and not enough safety schools. You need to have a good balance of these schools so that you increase your chances of getting in to certain places, your chances of getting scholarships, your chances of um, just making sure you have a safety net. Literally, you need to make sure that you have a good balance. If you're wondering what is she talking about, you can look at my video right here called um, how to research and make the perfect college list for you based on your stats. Don't base it off anyone else's stats. Don't base it off what looks good and feels right. Base it off of your stats. And um, remember, you should have two to three safety schools, two to three dream test target schools, and two to three reach schools. I mean, uh, dream schools, because you have to pay for all of them. And if you apply to more than that, you're gonna be stressing yourself out. Check out that video. The fourth mistake is that a lot of people wait until the last minute to ask for recommendation letters. Most universities require two to three letters of rec from your 
school teachers and or anyone who knows you from a professional setting, such as an athletic coach or um, a, a, a boss from a previous job or some member of the community to vouch for your community service endeavors. If the re letter of rec is due in December, let's say December 31st, do not ask for the letter of rec on December 20th. Please do not do that. Here's why. You are not the only person who attends your high school. Your high school probably has anywhere between 200 and 1,000 seniors. Everyone tends to have that one teacher that writes really, really, really amazing recommendation letters. That teacher is a person, one singular human being with a life outside of school. They still grade your papers and then they take their free time to write your letters of rec. The least you can do is give them a good amount of time to know that you need a letter of rec, that you would like a letter of rec, and that you are grateful for the letter of rec. You don't do these things last minute. Literally, as soon as school starts, bring it up. N not really just asking, but saying, you know, I was considering asking you for my letters of recommendation. Is that doable? All that stuff. You know what I'm trying to say? And another mistake they made, I just thought of this, even though I have like an outline. Most people don't thank their recommenders. They didn't have to do this at all. It is not in their job description. The least you can do is take the time to say thank you. Thank you so much for writing my letters of recommendation. If you could say this in person, that is best. If you could say it over email, okay, that's, that's okay. I like to pair my thank yous with a, a gift card, a very small amount, $10, you know, you could buy a little lunch, Starbucks, you know, but I'm just showing them that I value their time, I value their effort, and I know they didn't have to do it, and I'm really grateful that they did. And if none of this resonates with you and you're like, well, like, what's the big deal? If your application does not have the letter of recommendation sent in on time, your application will be void. You will not even be reviewed. They will not look at it. This is a very serious matter. You don't want to mess up this part and you don't want to ask someone who's notorious for forgetting letters of rec or doing it at the last minute. Please keep that in mind, please. Also, just to add that, just remember that the teacher or the professor can always say no. They don't have to do it. And if they say no, please respect them. They have a valid reason and they don't have to explain why they're saying no. If they want to, they can, but just respect that they can say no as well. So the fifth mistake that a lot of high school seniors make when applying to college is that they choose a college that has only one major that they're interested in like this is the only thing that they're remotely interested in that the college offers and that can be a problem in the future because more than half of um, college freshmen end up end up changing their majors and changing their career goals and you don't want to be stuck at a school where you can't be um, socially mobile or like move up just because you're not a fan of your major anymore you don't know what you want to do i always recommend like you look for a school that has a major you think you're interested in and then something secondary as well whether it's in a minor form or in a major form some interdisciplinary studies and or if they're okay with undecided majors like these are important things because you might think you know what you want to do now and then something changes and you don't want to do it anymore so it's important that you have that backup at the school that you're attending because transferring um, is a process as well um, if you can avoid it please do and then also like just the funding and everything can change if you change your major for example I cannot change my major to anything that's not STEM because I signed a contract saying that I would only major in something that's STEM to get my full scholarship. So like knowing that option helps like and then having the option to change if you want to beforehand knowing that like it's a thing. I don't know if this is making any sense. I'm so sorry. Um, it's very important. I am sharing this information because I don't want you to get stuck doing something that you don't like. Um, just because it's the only thing there and you have to do it for four years and then that can translate into the rest of your life. The sixth mistake that a lot of high school seniors make is that they repurpose their essays for every single application. 
this is completely wrong the only essay that should be repurposed or that means that it's the same is the common application essay because it's your personal statement and that one essay is being sent to let's say six seven schools if harvard asks you to write an essay and howard asked you to write an essay i am assuming that the prompts are two different prompts therefore the essays should not be the same you should not switch the titles of the schools in the essay remember um tip one the most common mistake you don't know enough you don't have specific um things you need to do your own research if there are five different essays involved in the application five different prompts if they ask for that you provide them with five different answers five different responses it's going to be a lot of writing but this is a good time um, to show the various sides of you i'm sure there's not only one part of you there are probably multiple and these different prompts allow you to show that am i saying that you can't use um, examples that are the same you can because it's your life and there'll be some overlap but your responses to the prompt should not be 100 percent the same like just don't just don't do that mm -mm. no 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 remember that every school is different every school has a different uh network a different mission statement motto and you can incorporate that into the essays and help them um be different from each other the seventh mistake that a lot of high school seniors make that might sound really obvious is grammar and punctuation mistakes Please proofread everything, even before you click submit. Um, sometimes formatting might change when you upload things into a portal. Make sure you spell um, anyone who you're citing their names right. If there's a professor on campus that you've researched and you added his or her name to your essay, make sure you spell that correctly. Make sure you spell your hometown correctly. Make sure you spell the united states of america correctly use proper acronyms um use like for example like you have to mention united states of america first before you turn it into usa make sure your grammar's on point have someone who's really good at english review your stuff proofread everything on the bright side these things are not handwritten but on like the not so good side um you can some typing keys and stuff actually use predictive text where they will put in a word that you didn't mean to use and just make sure that you're not overly fluffing your essays as well with words like myriad plethora um excruciating like stuff like that uh make sure you use words that you will usually use in your everyday life and like maybe sprinkling a like two big words or so but it shouldn't be every line either so grammar punctuation and like no excess vocabulary fluff the eighth mistake is for a specific group of students. If you're a first generation college student, if you're an immigrant, and or if you're a DACA recipient, or if you're undocumented, make sure you talk to your um, guidance counselor immediately. Like as soon as schools open and you have access to these people, make sure you set up an appointment and talk to them because there are a lot of resources out there for students just like you. Um, that you might not have the proper paperwork to show or you might not have the proper tax information if your parents are if you live in a single parent household and like you don't want the parent who's not in that household like you can't get in contact with him or her you don't have the financial documents for him or her and you don't want that to be counted against you when it comes to your financial aid you need to talk to your guidance counselor immediately if the application is due in March, you cannot talk to them in February about this. You just absolutely cannot because they also need time to find the resources for you and to um, guide you, <laughs> guidance counselor, yeah, they guide, and then also to advocate on your behalf with the schools. So you should do, you should really consider this stuff like immediately, like please do not wait to talk to them um, and you can trust them, like this is their job they really really um shine during the college application process also um when you do get to the point where you want to choose a college and you're like you got in like let's say it's around april and you're trying to decide before may 1st make sure you check out my video how to choose a college that's right for you um, i'll link it somewhere here and just check it out after this video as well like it's never too early to know what 
to look for within a college when it comes to choosing so the ninth mistake that a lot of people make is that they sell those themselves short they omit information from their personal statement because they assume oh this is obvious everyone knows this about me these people in the the admissions office they don't know you they do not know you grew up on a farm. They do not know you're an immigrant. They do not know that you spend 25 hours a week working on ShopRite while attending um, soccer practice and going to school full time. They do not know the stuff about you. Every single detail about you that makes you who you are should be on that paper. Stop selling yourself short. If someone is making you feel less than, then that's their problem. But every experience that you've had molded you into the person you are today, and that needs to be on the paper some way, somehow. Every experience, every single experience is important and vital. Like, just because you didn't get to spend a summer at the Hamptons doesn't mean that a summer in Ethiopia wasn't as valuable. Think about it. Put it on your essay and stop selling yourself short. I'm sorry if I'm coming off like really upset or anything, but like it really, I just, there's so many people who sell themselves short and it just needs to end, including myself. It needs to stop. It needs to stop here. It needs to stop with you, okay? I'm here to tell you that all of your experiences are valid. I'm also here to tell you that everything that your family has been through is valid. And if you want to share it, please feel free to do that as well. Just remember, they won't know unless you tell them. The 10th mistake that a lot of high school seniors make when it comes to applying for the college application process, it's financial. It goes back to um, what I said before about like, if you don't, if you live in a single parent's household, if you don't have the tax information ready, like you need to get that straightened away as soon as possible. If you need a, a, a character witness for a person, you need to get that sorted away as soon as possible. If you get free or reduced lunch, you have the ability to get your SAT waived. You have the ability to get your subject test waived. You have the ability to get, um, those scores set for free as well. You There's so many um, people who uh, qualify for application waivers, fee waivers, that don't know about it. Like you can email the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, you could tell them you're first gen, you could tell them that you just need one or they'll ask for your financial status. There's so many, 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 many financial benefits out there that a lot of us just find out about too late. And it's important that you definitely hit up, as, as I said before, your guidance counselors as soon as possible. Also, when it comes to scholarships, a lot of them are due like in November. Um, so you, this is the perfect time to start. And speaking of scholarships, make sure you check out my friends over at The Scholarship Expert. They're amazing. They graduated debt-free and they want to help people graduate debt-free as well. They have a bunch of programs. They're all linked below. Check them out. Um, they also have the perfect college student planner. Um, that's linked below too. And I also have a book called Teach Yourself How to Learn by Dr. Sandra Yancey McGuire. This book helped me get straight A's in college. I think it will be helpful for some high school seniors too, especially since you're taking AP classes. Make sure you check that out as well. Um, it is linked below. And if you're interested, please follow me on Instagram at Kim underscore road to PhD and sign up for my nutrition mailing list, which is relaunching in 2021. Thank you so much for watching PhD Roadies and I will see you on the road. Bye.